Hi, this is JP from Nautilus over Arkham. Uh, this will be my wrap-up uh, overview video of the Edge of the Earth campaign expansion and the playthrough I just uh, finished filming. Uh, in this wrap-up I will talk about my overall um, opinion on the campaign. Is it good? Is it bad? Are the mechanics interesting? Uh, do they function? And etc. So, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I just finished uh, the Edge of the Earth campaign, and well, uh, go see for yourself how Monterey Jack did, but spoilers, not good at the end, but otherwise uh, the run was okay. Uh, of course, I mentioned in my uh, uh, last couple of videos that I made some uh, gameplay mistakes, I played these uh, partner assets wrong. They only come into play when you are uh, instructed to add them to your deck, not when you have an asset in play. So, starting off with the partner assets. Uh, these are quite interesting and I actually like them as a game mechanic for a true solo, because uh, when you have a only one investigator, that investigator might have some um, areas where he or she is not that strong. So, for example, when I was playing Monterey Jack, I ended up using James uh, Cookie Friedrich a lot because uh, he boosts your combat so you can fight better. And uh, in those scenarios where I needed to fight, uh, Cookie helped me out, of course, uh, some scenarios. Add Cookies Custom 32 in play also, that helped me way too much uh, in those scenarios, so maybe I did better than uh, I should have in the campaign, <laughs> I probably did. But uh, yeah, the partner um, mechanic is okay. I ended up taking no damage on the, any of my partners, and I only lost three through, during the campaign. There is a possibility to lose a lot more early on, and that will change the outcome or, or the flow of the campaign tremendously to a different experience. At least what I, I read from the campaign guide. But uh, for feeling anything for the uh, partner assets, I feel like Arkham is supposed to be your investigator experiencing stuff, not uh, learning about these uh, story assets in that depth. In this campaign, so I think that was a bit of a miss to uh, lean that heavily on to the partner assets and not focus on the investigators actually playing the game or, or the investigators players are using to play the game. But uh, of course, I have heard that some uh, players have liked the partners and the immersion in their backstories, uh, so for each their own. But that is my opinion. Uh, next, I'll talk a little about the Tekelili cards. So, the Tekelili cards have a multiple of different uh, uh, revelation effects. So, some lose your resources, some makes you take damage, drop clues, discard assets, uh, etc. So, um, quite a bunch of different cards. And, well, uh, some cards just say that add a Tekelili card into your deck and you can't do anything about it. So that is a bit annoying. And of course, because I was playing uh, my force learning during the campaign a bit uh, incorrectly, uh, I was discarding the revealed Tekelili card. So uh, at the end of the campaign, I played them correctly. But yeah, uh, I ended up building up uh, like five Tekelili cards in my. A deck that it, uh, and uh, was really hesitant to draw more cards uh, because I didn't want to hit a Tekeli card when I had some other treachery uh, cards in my threat area that would resolve them multiple times. So if I would hit like a damage dealing or horror dealing uh, Tekeli card, I would just outright die, and that wouldn't be really <laughs> interesting. But yeah, um, overall, I I think without. Uh, 
really powerful card draw and uh, just playing the game uh, with uh, standard decks that draw normal amounts of cards. I think the Tekka Lily cards are okay, Not, nothing too harsh, but they might uh, be harsh in the wrong situation. But yeah, I think that's a okay, okay function. Uh, next, uh, I'll talk a little about the Frost Tokens. So, uh, these are of course the LCG Frost Tokens I have because all of my Chaos Tokens are from LCG Tokens. Uh, so, these are not the ones that come with the game, but uh, I have them here just because I actually don't know where my <laughs> correct ones are, uh, or the um, cardboard ones are. So, uh, the Frost Mechanic, uh, that was a hit miss for me. Uh, they ended up not uh, affecting the game that much because I usually was up by enough. So if I pulled one frost token, uh, that didn't affect the test at all. But uh, I, I probably did draw double frost tokens one, at least once during the campaign. So that's an auto fail. But still, that happened quite seldom so uh, i i feel like the i i uh, at, at some point i actually forgot the frost tokens are even in the bag so uh, not not as Im impactful a mechanic as the curse and bless tokens from the smart conspiracy for example but okay well it's it's a flavor thing for this campaign and i understand that it can't be that impactful and then uh, we have these uh, seal tokens. Well, you only use them in the last two scenarios, so that was a bit of a disappointment. I, I hoped these would have been in. Uh, you you could have done these with cards, I think. Not not to make like cardboard tokens you have to store somewhere, etc. But of course, I understand they had plenty of room in the cardboard punch out board. Uh, after the tokens, uh, frost tokens, and the multiplier, uh, clue and doom tokens, etc., and resource tokens, etc., so they also. But um, how they function was done okay in my book. Uh, in true solo, you are probably not going to be able to get all of them in the heart of the elder, uh, heart of the madness scenario where you can pick them. You could also just skip that scenario and ignore them so they wouldn't even come into play during the whole uh, campaign. But I think uh, they were also fine but I would have wanted to see them in earlier scenarios in some form. But it is what it is. And uh, that is basically all the mechanics and components and uh, lastly, I want to talk about the uh, campaign as an overall. So, I'm actually only just showing, because I don't want to spoil if uh, anything major from the campaign booklet. So, uh, I'm just showing this so I can uh, remember all the scenarios. So, uh, we had uh, scenario 1, which is Ice and Death, but it is... Uh, divided into three parts. So uh, I ended up filming it in a separate chunks of uh, three videos and that actually made it feel like I was playing the same scenario over and over again. Uh, so the same map, uh, just a, a different kind of uh, easter egg hunt in all the three different scenarios. So that was repetitive and I felt like that was that, that felt lazy, so to speak. All, all credit to the design team, but uh, I didn't enjoy that playing the same map three times in a row. Even though you were uh, not uh, exploring the whole map all the time, but still I felt like playing the same scenario with a bit of a different twist uh, three times in a row. Uh, after that, of course, in the middle of that you might end up in the Fatal Mirage, and that is also that you might end up playing it, depending on how you do, three times during this campaign. Which is a lot of repetition of a same scenario that 
just okay. Again, it gets uh, a bit different each time you play, you get to discover different things. But the mechanics are basically the same, so you're replaying the same scenario with a twist. And I, I really don't enjoy that, because one of my most hated scenarios to play is Heart of the Elders Part 1, which you might have to uh, play a bunch of times to get all the uh, pillars in that scenario. But if you haven't played uh, the Forgotten Age, that is uh, for sure uh, the scenario I hate the most in all of Arkham Horror LCG. But uh, again, we are seeing the repetition here, so Fatal Mirage. I ended up playing it once, so that was fine, and that was a good game. Uh, and uh, yeah, then um, of course, uh, then we get to the for uh, to the Forbidden Peak scenario. Uh, that actually was a fun scenario to play. It was really different from the rest of the scenarios in this uh, box. And uh, I, it, it reminded me a lot about the Dunwich Legacy scenario, the Essex County Express, which is really fun and exciting scenario to play still to this day. Uh, of course, some <laughs> some really fast decks just crunch that, but it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, the, the Forbidden Peaks was a good scenario, and uh, next after that is the best scenario in the box. The City of the Elder Things. Uh, it introduces the same key mechanic that was first introduced in the for the greater good scenario in the um, Circle Undone campaign, and that is one of the highlights of that campaign. And again, uh, the key mechanic makes an appearance here, and that scenario was really fun to play. I enjoyed it uh, through the whole whole gameplay and the. Uh, um, how you f uh, discover the keys, uh, have to uh, trek around the city, and of course there's multiple layouts of the map, depending on which expedition member gets to decide where you go, and etc. So there's a lot of replayability in that scenario, I feel, because the keys get to uh, go to different locations each time, uh, the map might be different, uh, the locations are randomized, so of course, a lot of randomization, but in that it didn't feel uh, like annoying randomization because you knew where all the keys were because they are uh, face up. So you, you you see the keys immediately where where they are uh, on the map. So you know where you can plan out your uh, route, and of course it might change depending what location you find, etc. But that was definitely the high point of this campaign. Uh, then uh, the final scenario, the Heart of Madness, and that is a two-parter. Uh, as I said, you could skip the part one, ignore the steel tokens uh, completely, not uh, even try to get them, those. They are not that necessary, I think, at least that's how I felt. But of course, they will help you a lot if you get a couple of them uh, activated uh, uh, in the part one. But then again, uh, part two, the same map with a few different locations and a, a few different mechanics and a really annoying timer, uh, at least for true solo. And of course, I, I noticed uh, after editing my game through of that scenario, I misplayed the enemies that spawn all over the map. Uh, when you evade one, you get to evade multiple of them. Uh, with the same action, so I, I totally missed that after starting to play it. And how you spawn them was worded so weirdly for me. I had to read it like three times from the act card to understand how they or, or the agenda card to understand how they are laid out. But again, that felt like a really, really repetitive uh, second act for the first scenario. Of course, uh, the part one and part two were, can be played in one go, but that would mean it would be like, a, for me, a two-hour video, and uh, I think when playing through solo and filming these videos, um, I feel like a one-hour Arkham game is enough, because 
more than that, it, it starts to get jarring to watch and <laughs> listen my monotone voice for throughout the game. So, so maybe because of that, I I like to play these uh, part one, part two, part threes, etc. in uh, uh, different chunks. And yeah, that was the whole campaign, uh, the story. Nothing really spectacular. I felt like the story could have been a bit bigger, but it felt really compressed uh, or small. Uh, uh, and well, yeah, of course, to counterweight that the, the story felt small and like claustrophobic. That that was well. I I don't mind that the story is happening in a really tight space, but then if the maps are like huge, that <laughs> that. That is just jarring and it doesn't work because then you lose the immersion of the really tight situation, etc. So I think that was a bit of a miss uh, to have uh, two big maps in, in this campaign. The only um, tolerable maps were to the Forbidden Peaks for me and also the City of the Elder Things, even though that map was huge, um, you had ways to move around the map faster and my deck was built to move around fast so it, it was okay with, with my deck but yeah uh, well uh, that is basically all I want to say about the campaign as a whole um, I feel like we are heading in a wrong direction with all of the story text or the amount of story text of course this uh, campaign booklet Let's uh, Maxine write a lot of story text, but that is a double-edged sword. Some people like to read it, but for me, if I have to read like two pages of text, like a mini novella, before I even get to, to the setup of the scenario, it uh, puts me off of playing sometimes. And uh, usually, I have like okay, now I have like a two-hour window to film a playthrough, uh, and Half of that goes into uh, me reading <laughs> uh, fluff text to understand what's happening uh, in some degree. That's a bit too much. So, of course, now that I have played through this uh, campaign once and read most of the uh, fluff text, uh, I can skip it in future better and know that when I go, I can just uh, uh, skip, uh, skim through the text and go to different parts of the uh, set up faster, so I think that 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 will ease up uh, in further playthroughs. But still, um, maybe try to keep the text a bit shorter in the future, please. <laughs> that this is, of course, my opinion. I know people who love to read uh, story text and stuff like that, but for me, that is not necessary. I I like that the game tells the story, not. Uh, set up and stuff like that. So I I, I feel like some uh, previous campaigns like Carcosa, uh, The Forgotten Age, and even Dunwich uh, did the storytelling through the gameplay really really well, and the story text between uh, scenarios was not too jarring or long, and it didn't take that long to read. But of course. Uh, opinions may vary, and um, I think I, I feel like this campaign lands in the mid tier of uh, uh, quality or enjoyment for me when playing. Uh, is of course after one playthrough and playing only as true solo. So, uh, again, if playing multiplayer, it, it, it might feel way different, but this is this is the opinion of a true solo gamer mostly, uh, but yeah. That is basically all I wanted to say about uh, Arkham Horror's latest campaign, Edge of the Earth, and uh, how the mechanics and the campaign feels like. So, hope you guys uh, found this video interesting and useful. Thanks for watching, and until next time.